Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And today's car is the BMW i5 M60 xDrive. Big name, electric BMW with 600 horsepower. Basically the new 5 Series. And it's a slightly unusual car for Harry's Garage. I wasn't going to test any more electric cars for a while, but I went to a BMW event before Christmas where they showcased all their electric cars. And I drove one of these there and I came away quite shocked by it. And I'm gonna go into detail in this video why. So I'm not gonna give the game away now, but this is a very surprising car from BMW from my point of view. And I think it needs discussing. So let's have a look at this car. 600 horsepower, as I say, X drive means it's four wheel drive. It's got a motor at the back and the front, and it has a boost function on the wheel. You pull a paddle and you get 600 horsepower and more torque as well, 820 Newton meters of torque. It is also an expensive car. It lists just before anything, 96,840 pounds. This has 17 and a half thousand pounds worth of options on it. Yes, really. And this car on the road with delivery, 115,000 pounds. Monster amount of money. How do we get to a five series is 115,000 pounds. It's not from M division. It's not like an M5 CS, individual seats, high revving, amazing engine. No, it's just a 81 kilowatt hour electric BMW with quite a chunk of horsepower, two motors. Let's go and have a closer look. Yeah, it's quite distinctive on the road. It's grown, the 5 Series. We'll go into details there. It's the eighth generation. And this being the electric version has this sort of smoothed off grille. If I can just open this car, I think it will do things. Yeah, it lights up. There we are. So the M60 version, this top version, gets this sort of lipstick around the grille, just if you didn't see it, notice it in the first place. Uh, trick lights here. Um, you can see this is a sort of radar thing. Cameras here. This is all the modern tech we get on the cars these days but keep coming round gets 21 inch wheels monster great tires on it 255 on the front 285 at the rear but it's just the size of it the new 5 series is over five meters long Range Rover size I mean, this was the mid-range saloon once, but uh, it's more 7 Series than 5 Series for me. This car, one of the extras it has on it is some carbon on it. Yeah, carbon exterior styling means you get carbon wing mirrors like that. So that they're done in carbon. And then at the back, there's a little carbon spoiler as well. Interesting design of wheel, these BMW individual wheels. You still get... The 5 Series, this sort of distinctive style around here with a 5 there. This car has the panoramic roof on it as standard as well. And there's the M badge. I think it's the M Performance. It's not from M, but they like using the M. I suppose that justifies the £115,000 price. Big boot, as you'd imagine. Here we are, powered, ski hatch. You can put your cables in there as well, which is all very nice. Um, a rear diffuser of sorts. It's not a diffuser. I'm going to have to have a look. Uh, well, it actually, yeah, no, they have thought about airflow on that. Um, 143 miles an hour top speed on this car. But yeah, it's a, it's an interesting car. It's quite a quite good space in the back. Quite happy down there. You get individual. They're all on a screen. Everything's on a the screen these days, and the. We'll have a look at the interior in more detail when we're outside, but you can see all this glows. This is all, you can change color, whatever you want on there. See it all coming alive, the screen across there. As I say, we'll look in more detail once we get outside, but I just wanted to show you this. You can actually lift this up and you might think you get a front boot in the front of this car. No, if I lift this up, you get a great big slab of plastic with an M on it. I can actually just wiggle this up if I give it a little wrestle. And there you can see the, well, there's a heat exchanger in there. There's the inverters there and there's an electric motor 
down below. And what you can hear there is the heat exchanger because it's, I've opened the door and unlocked it. It thinks we're about to go. So it's preconditioning the interior and adding a little bit of heat to the battery as well. So yeah, no front boot on this car. Anyway, what I'll do now, put that back properly, take it outside and then we'll take it for a drive. Yeah, it's all very modern BMW in here. This is as well state of the art for them, I suppose, where where it is. Because the keys in here, you can already hear the heating getting going. It it automatically starts heating the cabin before I've even started or press start stop on here. And it's very different in here. There is so much to discuss really and operating this car. There we go sounds with this car everything has seems to have a sound with it these are my modes i think it's easier to explain these when we get going but personal sport efficient expressive digital art relax oh what's happened to bmw but anyway there's all these modes uh, i'm setting personal at the moment on here there's this gives you a sort of shortcut to the craziness. I could just press this button and you'll see just no end of ops options on here. Look at it. I mean, it's just so distracted. It's untrue. But there is a shortcut. Uh, and if I press this one, we'll go back to there. And then I press this one. I go to this. This is driver assistance. And I'm afraid the first thing I have to do on here is warning for speed limits. I turn off. It's decided that my front drive is a 20 mile an hour limit and it bleeps and bongs at me as soon as I set off from the house, which is nonsense before we get anywhere near the road. Lane departure is a two touch thing. Yeah, I'm afraid at the moment, living in the country, the lane assist just doesn't work. It can't cope with potholes, cyclists, puddles, horses. It's just constantly fighting it. So it goes off, utter nonsense, unusable and the warning of speed limits every car i've tried has these false speed limits that aren't there the one thing i do like about this you can adjust uh, it won't warn you until you're three or four miles an hour out uh, above the limit or approaching it yeah that's the other thing it starts bleeping at you as you approach a 30 or 300 meters from a 30 limit it will start bleeping out you're going into a 30 and you're doing 38 this is just disaster so yeah i'm afraid it all stays off anyway slight rant over what else have we got in here yeah little cubby holes in there wireless charging on there this this changes color all this round here this isn't a fixed trim this blue you can see these are your vents so you can adjust you touch that and decide how how much you want out of the vents oh there's these as well this is direction i think um, where it's actually blowing can't quite tell where it's blowing which is quite a nice touch panoramic roof one other thing I will say on this, for £116,000, I think this is really cheap how this all looks. All, there's, there's something about it, it does, absolutely does not feel £116,000 sat here. Uh, they try to bling it up slightly with this sort of crystal controller here, but yeah, don't, it's the, these modes and the way everything sort of creaks when you press it, it, it it's just... It just doesn't feel right to me. But there we go, it's in all BMWs. One thing I do like and worth mentioning, I do like the little M stripe on, on the seat belt. So I think that's a very nice touch. But yeah, on the wheels, I've got cruise control this side and this side controls what I want to see on the dash. Right, enough. Put it into drive and off we go in silence as you'd imagine. Right, let's head off, go find some better roads. One thing to say about it is very easy. It just drifts around. It's a beautiful control of on the accelerator. Just adding power, moving off is all very gentle. It reacts to the throttle very quickly as well. And I can set the regen as I want it as well via this menu. I'm not going to go in and now because it's too many touches. But it does have this overboost function, which I ought to talk about because it adds more horsepower, but the torque doesn't actually go up. I think it goes from 795 Newton meters to 820 Newton meters. I'm gonna press it now. There we are, instantly. I've only got, yeah, 10 seconds and off we go. And I get a boost 
and then it finishes its boost. <laughs> it's a little toy, isn't it? But um, it, it doesn't actually make as much difference as you think. It, it, it sort of lights the cabin up. I've just pressed it again. Yeah. Um, no, I won't. I'll put it into sport. I can feel the seat sort of squeeze on me. You can just see everything now changing colour inside the camera. You're all red and angry and rah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, modes. Uh, I'm going back to personal again. But, yeah, the, the boost doesn't make that much difference because it's actually the torque that accelerates you away when you hit the accelerator quickly and you're doing an overtake. And the torque doesn't actually gain that much with the boost. It's actually as the revs rise, well, revs, whatever, the motor speed goes up, then you get more horsepower. So it makes more difference at higher speed than it does at lower speed, I think is what I'm trying to say. And it has quite a lot of work to do. The, the motors on these, I'm gonna, I'll flash it up the actual number. I think it's 260 at the front and 340 with the rear motors. So there is slightly more power to the rear, as you'd expect. And they've got a lot of work to do because this is quite a heavy car. I did weigh it and it was 2,400 kilos. For a five series, yes, I know it's got a you know it's electric and electric are heavier, but it has all the toys. It has rear steer, it's got 48 volt anti roll bars, front and rear, um, yeah, panoramic roof. Everything that's sort of heavy on this car um, is because of that it's also can charge at a very high rate, which I'll mention in the sort of summary as well. But I have lifeless steering. I have typical electric steering and when it's precise i can turn in so what again i can feel a bit of slip around there but it does feel overwhelmingly electric i don't know how else to explain it it is so unlike a, a regular hydraulic rack so unlike what we used to get from bmw now as you know i use this bit of road because it's a rubbish bit of road bumps etc and in this setting yeah, it does control. The dampers are working very hard with that mass and the ride, pretty good really. The only time it gets caught out is actually just controlling the mass. It's got so much mass to control. If I go over this, there's a funny bump here and it will just get a bit out of sorts. There we are. Oh, throw. And, yeah. and it, you can feel it almost bottom out. It hasn't got enough wheel travel to contain the mass of this car. The thing about this 5 Series is you can get it with regular power units. You can get it with a 2 litre petrol or 2 litre diesel engine, mild hybrid. You cannot get the diesel in the UK, unfortunately. And so that's a very different car. That's on conventional springs. This is air sprung. And that, those cars, those conventionally powered cars, are 680 kilos lighter than this electric version. I mean, it's a completely different car. The poor guy setting up the chassis. It's like start again. You've got that less a mass and also front engine and things. It's very odd that BMW have decided to make this, you know, premium electric car on a multi-platform that can do all sorts of power units. There's so much to discuss with this car. I'm going to start doing likes and dislikes now. And I'll start with the likes. And as I say, it's the control of the electric and the ambience. I like traveling this car. I, I do like electric cars in general, just to do boring miles in town, commuting. There is an ease and a sense of sort of well-being because you're not through the gears, you're not sitting there ticking over and just you glide through the countryside all through town. I like that, and this is exemplary at that. Oh, here we go, yeah, and it's slightly out of control on there. Um, <laughs> trying to think of some more likes. I then sort of really go crazy with this car because of the mass, and it's salted rose, and they're a little bit slippery. But yeah, you can, you could set a very good A to B time in this car. There's no denying that. But let's move to the dislikes. And my goodness, there's a list. 
I, I, it's why I got this car in. I think from BMW, this is this car is a bit of a surprise. First, the price. It is way overpriced at 115,000. Yes, it has a few options, but you're still 97.98. I checked on Auto Trader, and it looks like dealers thinks it's overpriced as well. Lots of them with 11 and 12,000 pounds off list, brand new on a brand new car that has only just arrived in the showroom tells you this car is way overpriced. Then the weight. I, it's, it's the same weight as a giant SUV. Why have they made this 5 Series so flipping big? Why is it over 5 metres? There's nothing particularly clever about it. I expect more from BMW. They gave us the i3 and i i8 and then they come out with this sort of eight nine years later that's not progress don't understand it from bmw i have to talk about range and i'm staring at 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour at the moment with an 81 kilowatt hour battery well that threateningly gives you 240 miles you'll be lucky in real world to get it close to that you're 210 220 i would say in this car you see here i can't really push it farther yeah it's yeah it's not happy but i it does get the power down out though continental tires are excellent tires so yeah range compromise from from the weight and the four-wheel drive and the big fat tires it's got quite a good cd factor actually it's 0.25 but I would expect from my 115,000 miles to be able to travel more than 220 miles. And yes, it is cold before all the electric boys come on to me. I'm at three and a half, four degrees at the moment. But even at higher temperatures, I don't think you'd get more than 240 miles from it. And I expect more from a car like this. Another dislike, I, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I just don't feel as though I'm sitting in a 116,000 pound car. Just the fittings, and fixtures on it don't feel real class. I'm having to do too much on the menu. I've lost all those beautiful buttons. This, the way BMW used to do their switch gear used to be a highlight, and now I'm all into this electronic gear, and I do I want to do these modes? Do I have to do these modes? Do I want art? What's, the, what's one of them? I sport, I sort of understand, but efficient expressive what's expressive what's that meant to mean i have no idea what expressive is and then i, I notice there's digital art and i can play things on here here we are a connection with bmw yeah. start with the creation of the 18 bmw r car okay with the digital art mode we have the chance to cooperate again and integrate my art into the software of the car. Oh, I think it's kind of a designate between BMW. Sorry, and you've, me. you've lost me. You've lost me. I'm going to disappear. Yeah, let's go. Um, um, bye. Yeah, bye. And now I've gone back to personal. Can you shut up now, please? Other things you can do on this car? Well, if I press modes, go back to here. It's iconic sounds. If I just press that, there we are. As I accelerate now, <laughs> yes, you can you can set different sounds for your different modes. There we are. Yes, in your flying i5 M60. Ah, <sighs> so yeah, that gives you a little flavour of of this car. One other thing I must mention actually on charging, and I'm going to mention this in other reports as well. I now check how much electricity you put in to charge the battery because it's beyond what you think you add to the battery it the label on this battery sorry slightly complicated has a gross capacity and a usable capacity the usable capacity of this battery 81.2 kilowatt hours i charged it with one percent of battery left one mile of range it took 88 kilowatt hours to charge that battery you lose approximately 10 percent of the electricity you are being charged at home charging your battery 
in the car. So 10% is lost in heat and losses through the inverter cables and that sort of thing. No one mentions it, but I'm starting to measure it because that really annoys me that it, it's like spilling petrol as you're filling up your tank and you, know, you lose 10% of the fuel on the ground or in heat, as it were. Very odd that it isn't mentioned more in media. I don't understand why it's not. But conclusions on this car. As you can probably gather, I'm not that chuffed with it. I just don't think it makes any sense whatsoever. I know companies buy this because they can then save on their corporation tax and benefit in kinds and stuff. But surely the amount of tax you're going to save on this car, 20% isn't it, corporation tax. You can already get 10% discount before you even start negotiating on a new one. What's this going to be worth in a year's time? Doesn't make sense. The range doesn't make sense. The weight, it's just not BMW at its best. And for the first time, I think in a road test, I will give this car a rating of do not buy the BMW i5 M60. If I was looking to buy a new 5 Series, I would look very closely well, you can't get two litre diesel if they imported it, but they don't. I, I'm going to do a separate story about that. But I would probably go for the, one of the plug-in hybrids if I really wanted the BMW 5 Series. But basically, there are better cars out there, more efficient cars, and this is not a direction that points to the future of electric driving as far as I'm concerned. It's a cul-de-sac, these two and a half ton, inefficient, low range, cars coming out at the moment things will get better BMW say the range is going to improve dramatically in a couple of years 25% better more efficient less weight better batteries that's the future we want not this this feels like a bit of a dinosaur to me already and it's only just been released so there you go there's my conclusion on the BMW i5 M60 X Drive um, there's going to be a follow-up video on this because I'm going to discuss the wider picture of electric cars. I think there's, um, it's worthwhile doing because there's so much to talk about at the moment. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.